Hey, it's Luke. I'm so excited about this. The developers for the Oberheim DMX plugin, uh, GeForce, just did an update and they added something we've all been asking for, and that's multi outputs. I mentioned it on my original video about the DMX, and it was something that would be so useful because it lets you process each drum individually, which is really nice, especially with the kick drum. We like to process it quite a bit different than other stuff a lot of the time. It's so useful to have the multi outputs now. To turn it on, you'll just wanna to go to this cog here and make sure that this multi-channel output support is turned on. So that's the first thing you have to do. Once you've done that, the plugin is sending each of these drums individually into your DAW. It's also sending, I believe it's the delay and the reverb as separate channels as well, which is really nice. If we take a quick look at the manual, they actually explain how it all works. So you've got each of the eight channels and the two FX channels, and they're done as pre-fader sends. So if you adjust these here, it won't affect the output and the mute and solo won't affect either. So it's basically the original sound coming out of it, but you can do these adjustments in your DAW now. They also mentioned that it doesn't pass through the master bus section. So that'd be these things here. So if you're using these effects, it'll be less useful for you. But still, this is a game changer. It lets you do so much with the drums. And one thing they do mention here, and we'll look at that in a minute, is that it doesn't automatically turn off the stereo out. And all that means when you're using it in the DAW is that whenever you set up your other tracks here, uh, you'll just have to turn this one off. We'll look at that in a moment. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. It seems daunting at first, but it gets way easier over time. So we've got a MIDI track set up here with the DMX on it, and we're going to create an audio track. We're actually going to create a bunch of them, but we're going to do one first and I'll explain why in a moment. So this will be our first drum, which will be the kick. And over here where we've got audio from, we're going to choose DMX and this one here will be the bass, the first one. And we're going to do the monitor in here. And what a lot of people do is they create a whole bunch of tracks and then change them all to in and then go change these two things individually for each. But what I find is quicker is now that we've got our track this way, we just do command D or control D, I guess, if you're on Windows and we create, let's see how many we need here. One, two, three, four, I think it's 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so we're gonna do, we've got the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to go here and group these all together. All of these tracks, we're going to do group and this will be useful. I'll show you at the end how you can make this so much easier every time. So we've got our audio tracks and all we have to do for these, because we duplicated the track with the monitor in and the DMX already selected is just go to all of these and just choose a different drum. So do snare, hi-hat, the toms. And like I said, I'll show you how to do this pretty well automatically from now on, once you've done it once. Okay. So we've got them all set up. And what I'm going to do now is choose one of these MIDI files that comes with the DMX plugin. And if we look at it, okay. Yeah, this one's pretty full. So if we play it right now, do hear it and we hear it on all of these. So we're basically hearing it twice. So we've got, so this is the whole thing and it's really loud because it's, it's running through twice. So we just have to turn this off here. So now this is running through just these here. So we've got the multi output set up. What it is playing from the DMX is this. And I'm assuming I haven't tried it. Yeah. See these. These don't do anything like they mentioned. And these don't do anything. So those, <laughs> those toms came out of nowhere, but so we've got everything going now and that's the way to do it. So if we want to have that kick drum, which will be this one here and we can rename these. And if you want to do that more quickly, a lot of people do this for each one. So they'll do rename kick and then they'll hit 
they'll hit enter and then do it again. But if you hit tab, like I just did, you can basically just go through all of these just one at a time. Hi hat toms. It's sort of nice because you can see them. I'm trying to show you on the screen, but you can see them in the audio from section there. So, uh, toms two symbol, and it might feel like you're doing this for nothing, but it's worth doing this because, uh, we're going to reuse this delay. I really like the idea of having the delay and the reverb sent separately. So it's really nice because now if we want to process the kick, we can throw an EQ on here. And if we solo just the kick, so we want to boost something here, we can do that separately. And we weren't able to do that if it was sending just a big stereo output of everything. So what I would have to do most of the time was to run a few different instances. At a minimum, the kick separated. So I'd have one track running the DMX with just the kick and another one running everything else or split it up even more if there was other stuff to process. So it's really nice to be able to do it this way. And what I've been saying from the beginning is once you've done this, you can rename the group. We'll call it DMX multi output. And you can take this group here and drop it into either your user library or into a folder in your sound library, wherever. And uh, so we'll just drop it here in the user library. And then if we want to reuse it, we can just load up a new project. And if I want to add it here, I can just drop it right into the project here. And the interesting thing with this is you've got the DMX set up already. And if you look at these earlier, the DMX was the first track. Now it's number 16. So basically if we hit this, we're going the same way we had it earlier. It just drops right into our new project. And I forgot to mention this too. If you want to process the whole drum machine, you can use this one here, basically the track at the top of the group and you can throw in whichever effects you want. If you want to add compression, if you want to add filters, if you want to EQ it, whatever you want to do, you can do here, it'll process the whole group or do the individual drums like I was mentioning earlier. So it's really nice to have. This will be so useful. The DMX just sounds so good and uh, this just makes it even easier to use. So I hope this can help you make some fantastic music. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.